painting. <coughs> We're going to airbrush this. Now what I do with airbrushing is I take a little bit of blue tack. It's obviously you have to do this top and bottom. Push the model on to your blue tack. Cocktail stick in the bottom and then you have something to hold your model with. Now, uh, I'm quite new to airbrushing so let's see how we go. I have, for everyone that wants to know, this is a Harder and Steam Bag Ultra airbrush. It's got a 0.2 needle and it's running at about 1.2 psi. Now, let me see if I can find the colour. Looking for a black colour so that I can paint it black uh, for a little bit of shading. 20 minutes later. The colour I'm hoping to paint it is going to be NATO black. What it basically does is if you paint the model, well I paint the model black first, it lets you create some shaded parts. Always give your model a good shake, sorry your paint a good shake, uh, and mix up. I always use the end of the paintbrush, on. it's just a bit easier that way. A good stir. Now we're using uh, acrylic paint so you don't need to use any kind of masks, it's not poisonous. Now excuse the, the sound of the compressor. Next colour is the white to give me the shaded areas. This is going to be a bit tricky because it's very small.
nice shaded little areas for when we put the green on. Alright, so next we'll be painting the wheels and basically speaking, just with a brush, using the Tamiya paint. And the colour is rubber black, strangely enough, for the tyres. in uh, olive olive drab base um, which gives it that uh, olive drab colour obviously you only put a light coat over the top sorry you didn't see that a few problems with the camera but a light coat over the top and that way you see all the shadow coats that you've put on with the black uh, I've also attached the wheels a little bit of an angle at the front 
Uh, so that's basically the base bit of the model done. All we've got to do now is a few little bits of touch up, paint the seats a little bit, a few little extras. Got to put the twin vickers on the front, and uh, we'll see how we go from there. Let's. Uh, what I might do is actually paint the two guns now. If I can find my iron metal colour. It's a Tamiya colour. I do like the Tamiya paints for brush painting. Uh, they're nice to airbrush too, but you have to you have to thin them down. Um, it's not awkward, but I'll talk about it in a different video. It's a nice sort of cheaty way of doing it where you can but you have to use the Tamiya thinner as well. And also I wanted to mention that I do paint a lot of the stuff that is very small on the sprue. Painted the wheels on the sprue. And the nice thing about doing it on the sprue is you will get a white, you will get a piece left when you cut it off the sprue. But you can always just touch that bit up when it's on the model. As you can see on some of it on the wheels of my uh, of my Jeep, there's a few little bits there that need a bit of touch on. So that's the twin Vickers done. Uh, not going to put the going to try and make it a bit more like an SAS Jeep so I won't have the windscreen on but I am trying to put getting this couple of extra pieces of jerry cans on there in the box so it was a bit like uh, a long range desert Jeep type of thing which isn't what's what's in the instructions but it's always nice to have a bit of a play. My models are never They never, I mean, it's no good, no good watching this if you're a river counter. I build models for how I like them. I think that's all all modelers should build them. Um, I build things so they look nice, so I think they look nice, and I'm happy with the way they look. Um, I'm not bothered if it's got the wrong propeller on, or the wrong words, or the wrong stickers, or the wrong, but as long as it looks good, that's all good. And I think everybody should model in the same way. If it looks nice to you, if you're happy with it, it's all good. So, uh, right, so we have, I've uh, jumped a little forward. Um, it's all been painted olive drab. Um, I found myself a little car and a few bits and pieces from other models. So I've managed to add some jerry cans on the side, water and fuel and a couple of tiny little rucksacks put on the end and I've also added the uh, two Lewis guns which are painted black. Uh, all we've got to do now is just finish up a few little tiny bits and pieces that you can still see with some olive drab. So on top of this Top of that rucksack, top of this rucksack, sack, whatever you want to call it. A little bit there. And I think I'm calling the. Oops! That's a classic. Normally something breaks off with it. Right. I'm now calling that done for the first coat. So the next job is to give it a uh, spray. I'm going to give it a spray with some clear coat so it locks all the stuff you've done in up till now and it keeps it looking like that. So it will stay like that. The next thing you put some clear coat on and then we will put the decals on um, and then once the decals are on we will then clear coat it again to make sure that the decals stay put and you can't damage them um, and then we'll start doing a little bit of weathering so a bit of 
uh, makes you look a little bit dirty. I've got a few other ideas for it as well. But uh, so, first thing we need to do is put it back on some blue tack. with your trusty cocktail stick <coughs> and then I shall be covering it in a, a silk matte finish uh, I use Lidl Special because it's cheap and it does just as good a job as anything else. Now this part of the modeling, I've got to be honest, I struggle with because this e this is the point where it either goes really nicely or it goes in the bin. One of the two. Um, but this 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 is uh, the point of my video is that I'm not an expert modeler. I'm just a person like everybody else who likes modeling. So if anybody's got any ideas or um, you know any idea uh, can quite happily post what they do or how they how they clear coat because it's the one job I've never really thought about I've tried the floor cleaner floor waxer but I've never really liked it the next thing I want to try is some of the Tamiya stuff so I can't remember what it is is it X something or other It'll be a clear coat, where are we? X22 clear. I'm hoping that you can weather that, you can water that down just like you do the paints, and we should be able to airbrush that on. But I shall give this a clear coat, let it dry, and we'll be back with the decals. Right, decals. Uh, decals is where I think your bottle really comes to life. Um, these are water slides decals. Uh, and what you need for that is some um, warm water and I use these two products one's called Microsol, one's called Microset uh, if you look at the bottle basically one of them you put on the model first that helps the decal slide and you can get it into place and this, the, the other one is to thin the decal to make it sit around all the curves and in all the so it looks more like a painted piece of sticker rather than just a sticker that's just gone on first thing to do is to prep your model after you've painted it and that is we've covered it in some clear gloss varnish uh, that helps the decal slide and uh, just gives you a bit of an easier ride when you're putting them on so what you want to do is look at the instructions find out what decals you need mine are the blue ones so it's hard to see because they're really small. Do I need little stars? So we carefully cut off the decal, a little bit around the edge. Uh, another good thing I've got uh, came the uh, tweezer set. Is a set of tweezers that lock shut so they work the opposite way to normal tweezers so you can hold your piece of decal you then put the decal in the water for about 10 to 15 seconds I've brought my tissue set it out give it a few minutes there we go This is this number one. Yes, so uh, we tiny brush, dip it in the solution, and paint that on the model liberally. I usually use a cocktail stick for this bit just to make sure that. Uh, decal slides and basically what you're looking for is your decal will slide about on, there we go, on the paper 
and what you want to do is slide your decal off the paper onto the vehicle and you put it on you know obviously where it should go and onto the place that you put the microsol one and then once it's on the vehicle you just paint over the top of it with the microsol 2 and that will soften the model sorry soften the decal so it fits around all the curves let's put that over there I don't know if you can see it but there you go registration number on the side and that's how you fit decals all decals are pretty much the same there are some reverse ones I found out when I did an F1 car uh, because they, they went backwards you put them on the tire and then you wet the stuff and pulled it off and we'll go through that later And that's how you put a decal on. I'll continue now to put the rest of the decals on and then we'll uh, come back and have a good look at it after then. and that looks like an airborne Jeep. Next step is just to cover the whole thing again with some clear varnish that locks in the, uh, the decals so that they are covered and don't come to any damage while we go through the weathering process. Right, so near the end now, uh, Jeep's all painted. Uh, everything's put on it, the decals are now on it, it's had a clear coat to lock in all the deta details and de decals. Now I'm going to use some dark green wash by MIG Ammo just to try and highlight some of the things and the areas and the creases on the Jeep just to make it stand out a little.
paint on quite liberally. And then give all the give it a bit of a wipe over with your cotton bud and that should get rid of the excess for you. And what you're left with is The wash stays in all the areas and all the creases makes it look a little bit dirty, a little bit grubby, like it's been on the battlefield. this dry <coughs> and then I'll come back and we'll put a little bit of mud on it just before we do the final clear coat right so we have washed over the vehicle with some brown I've put some dark mud on the tires make it look like they're a little bit dirty now I'm just gonna wet my bud and give it a wipe over Just cleans off the flat place, the flat pieces, and the bit, and it leaves your dirt in all the in all the holes. And the next thing I was going to do is use one of these. This is one that's uh, it's a bit like a makeup bag. It's got sand, light sand, and mud, and inside there's like a paste, and you rub the paste. On, on the thing, the applicator, and then you just wipe it onto the material, onto the vehicle, wipe onto the material you like. It's a little bit like dry brushing. You have to be a little bit more gentle with it because it does. few little buddies to go with him and uh, a little diorama I'll take a few more pictures of that so that you can see it a little better but there we have it one Willie's jeep painted weathered finished. Thanks very much. <laughs>